we've been having some very interesting conversations and I've had many of you push back on my use of the term black culture in a derogatory manner. It's like, no man, that's hood culture, that's ghetto culture. That ain't black culture. All right, I'm gonna throw a few statistics to you. Black folks have the lowest level of business ownership in a capitalistic society. That is problematic. Also, single mother, ba you know, single mamas, that we have rap songs. We have song after song about that. This is rooted in black culture. You know, so many of you are pushing back on it. Well, no, they ain't black culture because you don't want to admit or accept the truth that black culture at its core is derogatory. Look at what happened. When we used to have class, I remember when I was a little boy and I used to go get my hair cut and in the barbershop would be all these copies of Ebony Magazine and Jet Magazine. Never did I see a hood person or ghetto culture in Ebony or Jet. Never saw it. Remember the Jet Beauty of the Week? It was always some bright-eyed, brown-skinned, uh, athletic, or fantastically fit, beautiful black woman. She was gorgeous, she was nice looking, you know, she was a student or something. It was never any of these thoughts, that hoe over there. It was, it was always some, somebody's gorgeous daughter it was never a hood rat. It was never a Atlanta, Real Housewives of Atlanta type chick or little women. It was never any of these type of women. It was always some stand up, proper, someone you would want to make a wife. Now I'm about to in this video talk about the danger of black culture and where I feel that we shifted. And it first started with music. Going back to the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and part of the 90s, because the 90s is when it started to change. You had Jeffrey Osborne, Luther Vandross. You had so many rhythm and blues singers that were talking about beautiful and powerful black love. I love you, I wanna make you my wife. And we went from that in the 90s to, I'm gonna give you the D. I feel that that cultural, and it wasn't just like, just a segment of black culture, it was a at wholesale culture shift. Because how many of you know Percy Sledge, when a man loves a woman? James Brown. It's a man's world. We had these deep, beautiful songs that you could listen to with your grandparents in the room. And then we went to where, let's call it the R-rated label on a CD. And this is when the culture began to disintegrate because formerly proper upstanding middle-class black folks wanted to appear to be cool. And they started to emulate and hang out with the insidious ghetto culture. Because a lot of you keep pushing back, and I've had some people in the comments who were talking about when the Cosby Show came out, and remember this, there were many black folks who were saying that the Cosby's were not real. This was an ongoing debate. This was a big, big topic, they was like, they ain't real. This is fake because they didn't know any black folks like this. So Bill Cosby, which became America's dad, the Huxtable family became a primetime hit displaying the best of black folks. Let me say this again. The best of black folks. I put up Reginald Lewis, the best of black folks. I put up A.G. Gaston, the best of black folks. When you display the best of black folks, you change the cultural narrative. But then we ran into the Pookie and Ray Ray problem. 
Pookie Nim and Ray Ray were feeling some kind of way being up in the ghetto and being ignored. They were like, I want the attention that the proper, the best of the black folks were getting. I want that kind of attention. And they started to do any and everything to get it. First, it started with the dress because many of you go ahead and push back on the positives of black culture. I will discuss with you that the black culture of today cannot be confused with the black culture of the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. You cannot confuse the two. One of the things, like take Cam Newton. I don't know what's going on with his hair. See, in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, even the 50s, if you saw a black man on Sunday, he usually had a suit on, he had a haircut, he had proper manners, he had respect for women. And this has denigrated to I, I, I don't even know what it's called. I don't even know what to call it because this expression of looking like anything that goes, looking all crazy, wearing your hair, it's just like, I'm gonna wake up and look crazy today. This is part of the cultural shifts because as a whole, when you go back to Ebony, when you go back to Jet, you never saw black men looking like that. You can go ahead and go to the archives here online and you will not see one black man or black woman looking like that. Also, part of the, the, the derogatory black culture that began started with the anti-European movement. And this is the heart of black culture. I'm not gonna do what white people do. It's very, very interesting that this is an anthem of people who are deeply indoctrinated in hood ghetto black culture, yet the sell of weave is at an all time high. A girl can come here on YouTube and talk about her silky number nine, her yakky number eight, whatever. And literally within a year, this girl can go ahead, brand herself and start selling weave and start selling wigs and literally become a millionaire in this anthem of we're not gonna be European, it's one of the most confusing things to me because one of the things that I feel that is gorgeous is a sister with natural hair, natural locks. I feel that's a good look. But the same people who hold the old guard it's like, hey, we, we ain't gonna be like them. Those old Negroes, they were sellouts. Those old Negroes, they, they embraced white supremacy. And it, it's just funny, because those who are deeply wedded in black culture, it is nothing to see a woman who deeply embraces black culture to have a blonde wig on and blue eyes. And be talking about, hey, hey, and twerking. It's the weirdest thing. And many of you keep pushing back and talking about, oh, you ignorant, you know, you act like you intelligent, but you know what I say is the truth because the way that we used to be as black people, as a whole, as a group, we were respectable, we were classy, we were well-groomed, we were well-spoken. And in the 90s, when the shift of the music happened, was when the cultural shift happens. Because when I use the term black culture, I am not talking about the black folks of the 80s, the 70s, the 60s and 50s. You can go online and look at people from you know 1900 up to about 1985 and see a different type of black people, a different level of black people, a different wholesale attitude, a different presentation, you know, we were really, really classy. I remember in the 80s when I left Hawaii and I came to Fort McPherson, it was so different. I remember I could meet a girl on Monday and ask her out for Friday, not have to call, not have to do a checkup call like, hey, are we still on? Because typically I will meet you at your house at 7 p.m. 
and I would arrive at 7 p.m. and she would be ready or she'd be in the process of getting ready. This wholesale shift in culture was a move from respectability, commitment, and doing the right thing. It has moved to the basic instincts of humanity. Now, I put out, you know, someone was like, you know, over half of those people in Chicago were Hispanic. This is one of the things, really? What kind of Hispanic? Were they Puerto Rican or were they Dominicans? Because Dominicans are black folks. See, this is one of the things that has come because many Hispanic black folks have disavowed being black because of the contaminated culture that we have. It's like, I ain't black, I'm Puerto Rican, I'm Dominican, I'm Haiti, I'm Haitian, I ain't black. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. They were like, ah, oh, nah, don't, don't even, don't even, no, 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 no. I know who my daddy is. No, 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 no. And this is one of the things that I'm trying to present to you because if you go the other way, if you do not embrace the black culture of today, you will be successful. This is my big point. This is my talking point. This is what I've been going on. If you don't embrace that because the black culture is rooted in, I ain't gonna do nothing that's gonna make me appear, sound, or look like I'm white. I'm gonna wear the shiki. I'm gonna wear my hair all crazy just to prove to you that I am not white. Like when I was in Hawaii, the black military soldiers who got out of the military and stayed in Hawaii would grow their hair as long as possible so that they would not be associated with the military folk in this separation and this was this was part of the cultural shift because i think this was 1989 when you started to see this because when the Rook, Rook, uh, ray ray and pookie problem started to explode and we can go back to the 60s with the disintegration of the black family because if you look in the 60s records, white women had more out of wedlock births than black women, and then this started to shift. And then through the 60s and the 70s, in these urban centers, a new black culture was born. It was rooted in single motherhood, it was rooted in moving dominant black men out of the home, having these women out here fighting for life by themselves, and like, I'm gonna just say it, the, the best situation to raise a child is in a two-parent household. And one of the things that black culture has done it, and you can Google it, there's this woman who's saying that mothers, children of single mothers fare better. I am not kidding, Google it. Just Google mothers of single, uh, single mothers fare better than children of two-parent households. This is the ridiculousness of current black culture. It is the craziest thing I've ever seen. And like with Black Lives Matter, go to the website and th th there ain't nothing in there about black men. And this is where we're shifting the cultural shift of moving away from respectability, moving away from a decent family structure, moving away from a nuclear family, moving more to the Ray Ray Pookie model and it's contaminated, it's bad, and you're not gonna get wealthy embracing rap culture or black culture unless you are a rapper or you go on to one of these trashy television shows. Going back to the 80s, there wasn't one trashy black television show. Living Single, 227, Rock, The Cosby Show, these were all positive spins on the, at the time of that black culture. They were representative of that black culture. Good, hard working black people who did the right things, who did not embrace hood culture, who did not indulge in drugs, which has been replaced by toxic black culture television, the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now, 
I was up for a reality television show. Let me tell you why the, because at one point, reality television, really, because if you, for the love of Ray J, was one of the first reality television shows. What the producers of the content realized is like, take a show like Law and Order or a show like Grey's Anatomy. It may literally cost you two to three or four million per episode to create this show. Now, let's take Jersey Shore. You know how much they made their first year? They were getting like $500 per episode. So it cost them like probably 15 or $20,000 to produce an episode of Jersey Shore. And then, you know, as, as the show became more successful, they all band together and they got more money. But still, even when the members, the cast members of Jersey Shore were getting higher salaries, it still did not cost the production company the same amount of money to produce that show that it would of a Law and Order or St. Elsewhere or Grey's Anatomy. But here's the rub, they can sell advertising to advertisers for the same rate. So your production costs go way down. Literally for the cost of producing one episode of Grey's Anatomy, you could produce five or six reality television shows, seasons, for the same money that it costs you to produce one episode of Grey's Anatomy. So this is one of the reasons that you started to see some of the craziest shows because they were playing the numbers. It's like, if we create all these shows, one's going to hit and we're going to get paid. Because uh, when I was up for my reality show, I, I actually asked a lot of questions. I was behind the scenes. And essentially, if someone brings a show to a network, the executive producer, the person who brings this show to the network, could literally get five to $10 million per year from one show. So this is why they were putting out, I got to know producers and everything. And also, this is why you have seen this proliferation of toxic black shows, Real Housewives of Atlanta, For Love and Hip Hop, which shows the worst of black culture. We went from showing Bill Cosby, Living Single, to showing the best of black culture to now showing the worst of black culture. And this is why I use the term black culture, because it is the predominant culture of most black people. Not all black people. There are many black folks who don't practice black culture. And these folks are mocked, made fun of, teased by the people who embrace black culture. It is so bad, it is even in porn. Notice the difference between the, uh, there was there was this one guy, I, I barely remember it because I was like, this is crazy. There was this guy who was called Hood Hunter or something like that. And essentially he would ride around in the van and have sex with crackheads and prostitutes in the ghetto. And this became a genre. And then one of the things that I remember watching, it was the weirdest thing. It was, it was so low budget. And the guy was like, you know, these are dicks and we ends. He was just going ahead and there, there's a, a, a genre in porn, in porn where it's like, give me that end dick. This is the hood, ghetto, dominant black culture. And it ain't pretty. It's, it's like, you know, I really don't consume a lot of porn. But when I saw it, I was just like, this is disgusting. It's terrible. It's horrible. And with this antithesis of avoiding anything European, we go down this dark, dark road of not doing the things that are possible because of so many people embracing 
the dominant black culture, which has nothing to do with business ownership. And this is where we go back. I've shown you A.G. Gaston. I've shown you Reginald Lewis. I've shown you Alonzo Herndon. I've shown you dominant, well-groomed, prideful, respectable black men who made millions during the harshest periods for black Americans in time. How did they get there? They didn't get there by embracing the black culture today. They got there by being the best of the best. And this is something that if you want to escape the pathology of black culture, you're going to have to start to refuse it because I don't listen to a lot of rap music. I barely listen to rap music because so much of it is offensive. So much of it is stupid. So much of it is just, what fool created this? You know, it, it, it just doesn't make sense. So you, one of the things you have to do is to vigorously reject that and get on point with creating your business, you know, creating families and being the best of the best. Because right now, what is displayed from a cultural standpoint is the worst of the worst. And it's the craziest thing. I remember as a kid, there was so much pride and respect of black folks. I remember when I joined the military and I went back home and I visited all of the people and they were telling me how proud they were that I was making something of myself, I was going out there, I was becoming an adult. How many of you have those kind of experiences today? And also, whenever I had something to sell, these people who were poor, they didn't have a lot of money, they would put together what they could and buy my products and stuff because they supported me. And this is one of the things that is starting to disappear because it's all about securing the bag. But, you know, like uh, I got uh, a message that Omni and the Hellcats back. Omni is, the whole channel is a stunt channel. A lot of people like it, like, yeah, he's buying Ferraris, he's buying Hurricanes, you know, he's talking about businesses. He does not tell you how to start a business. And he still to this day does not talk about the business that got him all of this money and got him all of this trouble. And I think each time he disappears from YouTube, he is saving up money so he can stunt because when he doesn't stunt, the channel doesn't do that well, which is representative of black culture. Cause like I can tell you from someone who consumes a lot of YouTube, there are so many powerful YouTube channels that give you good, advice and they don't get the views because they talking about something substantial they're not like out here blowing money stunting doing all this crazy stuff and this is one of the reasons because you know i had someone was like well you you talk down to people if me telling you the truth is taking by you as talking down you have way more problems than i can help you with because I'm not, I've never said I was better than anyone else. I am just laid out the facts. And you know, it, it's just interesting because one of the things that you have to understand, and like I said, I consume a lot of YouTube. There's a lot of black channels that do really well. They're about flexing, they're about stunning. Uh, CJ on, on 32s is a car channel. It's about buying these cars, putting them on the wheels and everything. These channels do really, really well. But I have seen countless black channels that talking about business, money, fun. They don't even have 10,000 subscribers. Consistently, I see this. They don't even have 10,000 subscribers. I see this over and over again. These um, intelligent, well-meaning black folks who are putting out excellent content and they don't get the views. Why? Because the audience doesn't want that information. There's a small audience, and you know, I wanna thank the audience, the, the, the passionate few who really appreciate the business content. I really wanna thank the people who are going to 
Savage Finance because Savage Finance is growing really, really well. So I appreciate you folks because together we're going to build some things because we're not embracing black culture. We're, we're just not. And at some point, hopefully there will be another cultural shift back to the way that we used to be because I think it started with the music, then the culture, and then the attitudes, and then the transitions. Someone in the comments put up a book talking about, uh, I don't remember, it was written about little black kids who were doing well, who were being mocked by the dominant black culture. And it was written in 1997. And this is the 90s. I think from 1990 up until now is when the shift happened and you know, we gotta get it back on track. We gotta get back to respectability. We gotta get back to pride because I think the, the, it was started with the music. And music is a very cultural thing. That's where it started. And the music became toxic. It became denigrating. You know, Bobby Brown, my prerogative, that was kind of like shocking. And Bobby Brown's album is nothing compared to the toxic, dis dangerous, harmful music that is being produced today. Ain't nothing to it. Ain't nothing even close to it. So that's all I got for you. If you want to join me on the path of not practicing dominant black culture of today, go below, get 30 days to 2,500. Go below, get the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. And if you need help or assistance, go below and pick a consulting package and I can talk to you about how to make your business better. I'm getting ready to start doing some webinars and stuff about corporate and LLCs and S corporations. So be on the lookout for that. And if you bought a product from me or if you've got one of the free books, you are on the email list and we're about to get down because hopefully together we can make this culture shift happen sooner because like I said, I think there's a civil war. There are the progressive black folks and the non-progressive black folks. I don't think anyone is an N-word. I don't use that kind of language because it's such a slippery, slippery slope. So check this out, this next video, and I will see you guys soon.